Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Stan Romanek? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I will look at the background in this case and move to my analysis. Stanley Tiger Romanek was born in Aurora, Colorado on December 1, 1962. He said that he grew up in a military family. He claimed that when he was young, he was in special education classes because he had dyslexia. He said that he grew up in a dangerous neighborhood that had gangs. He was frequently caught in the crossfire and would get stab wounds. So I guess these gangs were using guns that shot knives. Stan was not happy about having such a terrible upbringing but he came to believe that his experiences were necessary for him to fulfill his purpose in life. At some point around 2002, Stan married a woman named Lisa. The couple lived in Loveland, Colorado. Stan Romanek is well known for making numerous claims about contact with aliens, including seeing UFOs and being abducted. He even made a movie about it in 2013. I'll talk more about his numerous claims and his movie in the analysis. In February of 2014, Stan was arrested for possessing inappropriate images featuring children. The authorities had found them on his computers. He was convicted of a felony in August of 2017 and sentenced to a halfway house for two years. Stan claimed that the government must have planted the evidence on his computers. He also falsely claimed a relative planted the evidence. In November of 2020, Stan was sentenced to 10 additional years of intense supervised probation. Now moving to my analysis. Let's take a look at some of the claims that Stan has made over the years about having contact with aliens. Item number one, Stan said that he had his first official encounter with a UFO on December 27, 2000. I'm not exactly sure what the word official would mean in that context, did the aliens notice him as they were flying by and say, this is not an official visit to Earth. This is unofficial. Therefore, your sighting is unofficial as well. Either way, Stan was driving along when he saw several people looking to the sky. He happened to have a camcorder with him. He captured images that looked like a silver hot air balloon. Stan didn't want to believe that it was an alien spaceship, but eventually he accepted that it must have been. Item number two. Stan said that in 2021, three aliens knocked on his door at 2.30 a.m. At first, it might seem as though they were there to sell Alien Scout cookies, but of course that's ridiculous. Aliens would never sell cookies door to door at that hour. Stan said that the aliens abducted him and filled his head with data, like symbols and math equations. It sounds like the aliens realized that Stan's head had a lot of extra room, which was not being used. Item number three. After the abduction in 2021, Stan said that he was abducted many more times. It was pretty much happening on a regular basis. He said the aliens had an intense interest in his reproductive system. Stan said that he sustained multiple injuries from these many alien abductions, which had no other explanation outside of alien involvement. Some of the injuries could be detected using a black light, like they glowed when the black light was on them. Item number four. Stan said on one occasion, a bright light appeared on the siding of his house and disabled a security camera. He believed the light was from an alien spacecraft. When he inspected the area the next morning, he found that the siding around the security camera was damaged as if it had been exposed to heat. Before he could remove a sample of the siding for analysis, mysterious men showed up at his house. They started removing the siding and replacing it with new siding. They told Stan that his landlord had ordered the work. Stan could not immediately get a hold of his landlord. He asked the men for the old siding, but they refused to give it to him. When Stan was finally able to reach the landlord, the landlord denied hiring the contractors. Item number five, Stan said that one time when he was riding his bicycle, he noticed that a black SUV was following him. He pulled into a parking lot but the driver of the SUV somehow managed to find another entrance into the parking lot and stopped near him. Men from the vehicle intimidated him and threatened him. 
Stan said that he beat one of the men with a bicycle chain before being hit with a taser, presumably fired by one of the men from the SUV. Item number six, Stan said that one time when he was painting, he fell to the ground and hurt his leg. He went to a physician who said that he needed a surgery. Therefore, surgery was scheduled. After his visit to the physician, Stan was abducted by aliens and a mysterious circle showed up in his yard. His leg felt stiff, but there was no pain. It had been miraculously healed. The physicians were stunned. Item number seven, after one alien abduction, Stan said that he woke up to find himself in a woman's flannel nightgown. He thought that the aliens also took a woman and they switched up the clothing. So he was taken at the same time as this woman and the aliens simply became confused as to who was wearing what clothes. I get this image of two aliens talking on a spaceship. One of them is holding up articles of clothing and says, does this guy get the pajama top or the flannel nightgown? The other alien responds, how am I supposed to know? I thought you were keeping track. Just make your best guess. Interestingly, Stan came to believe that the other person who was abducted was Betty Hill. She and her husband Barney came up with one of the most famous alien abduction hoaxes in the world when they said they were abducted in 1961. I have a separate video about them. Stan was questioned about having the flannel nightgown tested for DNA. He said that that was too expensive. Moving to item number eight, Stan recorded two videos that feature aliens looking into his house. At least this is what he claims. In one of the videos, a gray alien can be seen looking through a window. In another video, a gray alien is leaning to its left and looking through a sliding glass door. Stan said that the aliens had been sneaking around his property for a while. Stan claimed that he talked to an expert on videos who said that creating a fake of the first video would cost $50,000. So Stan is saying that the video must be real because he didn't have that kind of money. I find it very hard to believe that the video would cost $50,000 to make. If Stan already owned the camcorder, he could have produced the video for the cost of a gray alien prop, costume, or mask. I looked up the prices. The most expensive item was a 48 inch gray alien prop, which was filled with foam. It was $125. Item number nine, Stan said that on one occasion, his digital camera went missing and magically reappeared later. When he examined the images on his camera, he found that there were photographs of aliens interspersed with the regular images he had captured. So the aliens took his camera, decided to take a few pictures, left those pictures on the camera, and returned the camera to Stan. These aliens have mastered interstellar travel, but have not figured out how to manufacture a digital camera. Also, it strikes me as strange that aliens would be willing to kidnap Stan, but not to keep his camera after taking it. So they're okay with kidnapping, but stealing and keeping a camera would be off limits. Now moving to the next section, here I'll talk about Stan's 2013 movie titled Extraordinary, The Stan Romanek Story. The movie starts out by talking about how Stan has the amazing ability to overcome ridicule, emotional pain, and fear caused by people who do not believe his story. It then lists the overwhelming evidence that Stan has had contact with aliens. Here's a description of some of this evidence. Stan has grainy and blurry photos of UFO sightings. He's also captured orbs and shadows. He had injuries on his wrists that healed amazingly fast. The words, you can't hide, appeared on his computers. Lights would flicker when he approached them. His speakers would make buzzing sounds even though they were not plugged in. Bottles of his medication were melted as if he put them on the stove. Birds would fly into his vehicle. At one point, his wristwatch stopped functioning. He captured aliens peeking through the windows and had still photos of aliens, some of whom look like children. And he would receive creepy mechanical sounding calls on his voicemail where the caller would refer to him as starseed. This is a term for people who believe they originated as extraterrestrials. They were sent to earth by being born as a human or taking over an existing human. A number of people were interviewed in the movie. 
I find it curious that they all essentially made the same observation about Stan. They insisted that he was normal, with one person even describing him as very normal. Two mental health clinicians with PhDs insisted that Stan was amazing and definitely normal. Moving to the next section, here are my thoughts on a few items that stood out to me in this case. Item number one. Many people who claim to be alien abductees assign a grandiose meaning to their experience. It wasn't just about some aliens who became bored and decided to kidnap somebody. It's about apocalyptic and spiritual messages. The abductees are special. They have been chosen by the aliens to deliver important information in order to save the world. Some of them, like Stan, imply that they are star seeds. So these star seeds are aliens who are on Earth, who other aliens regularly kidnap to communicate some important message. Why didn't these star seeds just take the message with them when they came to Earth? Seems like this whole problem could have been avoided with a little planning. Not surprisingly, the abductees are never able to explain the content of the alien message clearly. So the aliens have made all this effort, but have still not achieved their objective. I guess this explains why the aliens continue the abductions. They're hoping someday that one of the people they take will understand what they're trying to say. Item number two. One thing that I found intriguing from Stan's movie is how he started off a lot of his fantastical stories by acting as if he was skeptical about the cause of whatever he was initially seeing or hearing. When he first became aware that something was going on, he didn't suspect that aliens were behind it. Rather, there was some mundane or non-alien explanation. For example, he might say things like, I thought the noise was a relative running around the house, or I thought that the strange figure was a little girl in a gray suit. Only when he investigated further did he come to believe that he encountered an alien. So here's a guy who claims that he is regularly abducted by aliens, yet he has an everyday explanation when he first hears something out of the ordinary. If someone was regularly abducted by aliens, or even abducted one time, they would be extremely suspicious when they saw or heard something strange. They would develop hypervigilance. Everything they see would be an alien trying to get them. Item number three, what is going on with people like Stan Romanek? In one sense, Stan is special among alien abductees because he has clearly fabricated evidence to prove his claim. Most alien abductees don't do that. They typically tell their story without presenting any evidence, fabricated or otherwise. Stan has all these videos and photographs of aliens, UFOs, mysterious injuries, and strange damage to his yard, his house, and other property. He has gone out of his way to prove his claims. I think that many alien abductees believe they are telling the truth. As I talked about in another video, sleep paralysis has a connection with making claims of alien abduction. As far as Stan, in my opinion, he is simply lying. He may still believe all the alien stuff, but he also knows that he's being deceptive. He probably justifies the deception because he truly believes he has some greater purpose. Item number four. When Stan was in jail waiting to be transferred to the halfway house, he had a great opportunity to prove that he was telling the truth this whole time. If the aliens had abducted him out of a jail cell, a lot of people would believe Stan's stories. Not surprisingly, the aliens never came for him in jail. I guess the jail visiting hours were simply too restrictive for them to work it into their schedule. It conflicted with when they typically go out into neighborhoods and sell alien scout cookies. If there's ever an alien invasion, Everybody who is incarcerated will be safe. So at least there's some option to defeat the alien intruders. Those are my thoughts on the case of Stan Romanek. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be as intriguing as technologically advanced aliens who have difficulty communicating. Thanks for watching.